we're going to continue looking at eigenvectors and eigenvalues. In particular, we're going to focus on the characteristic polynomial of a matrix. And what we're going to find is nothing new here. It's just we're going to define some of the things we've already done, some of the things we've seen. So I'll state the goals, define the characteristic polynomial of a matrix. I'm going to say some things about triangular matrices, and then finally talk about the trace of a matrix. So by the end of this, uh, if I give you a polynomial, you should be able to, de sorry, if I give you a matrix, you should be able to determine the characteristic polynomial of the matrix. Um, given the characteristic polynomial, you should be able to determine the eigenvalues of a matrix. And finally, you should be able to take a characteristic polynomial and factor it and do so in an efficient manner to get the eigenvalues of a matrix. So what did we do? Uh, we're gonna start off here just going back and looking at an example of something we've seen before. And suppose you're given this matrix. And we want to find the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this. The first thing to note is what's the definition of an eigenvector and eigenvalue is that AV equals lambda V. So if I subtract lambda V from both sides, and then I write lambda v as lambda times i times v. I can now factor, oops, the v, I'll be careful here, these are zeros. So if I have an eigenvalue in here, and this is a non-trivial vector, so this is not zero, then that means a minus lambda i has to be singular because there's a vector that will give me a zero when I plug into here. So that implies then that I need the determinant of a minus lambda i to be zero. And now this is a scalar equation because the determinant is a scalar and this is a scalar zero or this is a zero vector. So what does that mean in this case? In this case, it's gonna be the determinant of minus 28, 24, minus 30, 26. And the identity matrix is going to be the I2 identity matrix. That's going to be 0. So let's see then. Let's see. So this is going to be 28, minus 28, minus lambda. It's going to be minus 30, minus 0. Be 24 minus 0. It's going to be 26 minus lambda is 0. And let's see, so now the determinant of this is going to be the multi I'm going to multiply the diagonal entries. I'm going to subtract uh, the product of those two entries. Now what am I going to get? I'm going to get, let's see, let's factor all this all out. So I'm going to get minus 28 times 26 minus lambda times 26. I'm foiling this out. Minus a minus 28 lambda. It's going to be minus a minus 30 times 24. So what is that? That's going to be, let's see, 28 times 26 is 728, so that's minus 728. And this is going to be plus 2 lambda. Oops, and I forgot something. I got the minus lambda times minus lambda. So I can be careful here. That's going to be plus lambda squared. Plus lambda squared. And then the 30 times 24 is 720. So let's see, so I've got my lambda squared plus 2 lambda and 720 minus 728. Oops. It's going to be minus 8 is 0. And at this point, I can either factor this or use quadratic equation, whatever I want. Uh, I can think I can factor this. So this is going to be what? Uh, lambda plus 4 times lambda minus 2 is 0. Is that correct? So if I foil this out, I'll get lambda squared, 4 lambda minus 2 lambda is plus 2 lambda, and I'll get a minus 8. 
So this says that lambda can be a minus 4 or lambda is a 2. So in this case, that's one eigenvalue, sorry, one eigenvalue, that's the other eigenvalue. And now I would go back in and for each of these, I would call this lambda 1, call this lambda 2. And for each of these, I would go through and find the family of eigenvectors, or the space of eigenvectors, that's associated with 4 and 2. I'm, right now, I'm just going to focus on eigenvalues. And I just want to look at this and note that, what did we have? Oops. Everything flowed from that equation right there. And what's important is this is a scalar equation. And notice, when I do this, I'm going to get a polynomial as a function of lambda. So this is a function of lambda. So I can think of this as f of lambda equals lambda squared plus 2 lambda minus 8. And that came from looking at determinant of a minus lambda i. And because it's a 2 by 2, I get a polynomial of degree 2. And the, I, the goal here is to find a lambda that is a root of that polynomial. So this thing right here is very important, and it's uh, vital in terms of finding the eigenvalues. And it's also used in other situations. We're going to call this uh, the char characteristic equation. For this matrix. And if I find the zeros of the characteristic equation, I can get the eigenvalues of the matrix. So what I found here is that when I took a minus lambda i, I take a minus lambda off of every diagonal entry, and I take the determinant of that that determinant is equal to this thing right here, this lambda squared plus 2 lambda minus 8. That's a function of lambda. And that's going to be the characteristic equation or characteristic polynomial for this matrix A. And if I can find the roots, so if I can find lambda so that this thing right here, again, this is going to be the determinant of a minus lambda i. If I can find the values of lambda that make that zero, I can get the eigenvalues of our matrix. Again, we're going to call this the characteristic polynomial. Okay, so given any n by n matrix in general, the characteristic polynomial of the matrix comes from taking a minus lambda i then taking the determinant, and that's a function or a polynomial. It's going to be a polynomial of degree n. It's going to come from here. And what's important to note is this is a scalar function. It's a function of one variable, and it gives you a single value. So let's look at this example here. So if I want to find the characteristic polynomial of this, I want to take the determinant of b minus lambda. In this case, it's going to be i3. So this is going to be a polynomial of degree 3. So I'm going to take a minus lambda for each diagonal entry. like so. And OK, there's not going to be any really nice way to do this cofactor. So I'm just going to go across the top here. So I'm going to go plus, minus, plus, and I'm just going to grind it out. What am I going to get? I'm going to get 1 minus lambda. So if I get rid of that column and that row, it's going to be times the determinant of what's left. And it's going to go plus, minus. It's going to be a minus 1. 
So if I get rid of that column and that row, I'm going to be left with 6, 6, minus 9, minus 7, minus lambda. And this is going to be a plus, a minus 1, times the determinant. So if I get, ri get rid of that column and that row, I'm left with 6, 10 minus lambda, minus 9, minus 11. And so this function, this characteristic polynomial, is going to be 1 minus lambda times, now the determinant of that is 10 minus lambda times minus 7 minus lambda minus 6 times minus 11. It takes, I'm going across the diagonal, minus that. I'm going to have a minus a minus 1. The determinant of this is 6 times minus 7 minus lambda. So it's 6 times minus 7 minus lambda minus 6 times minus 9 plus a minus 1 times, it's going to be 6 times minus 11, and minus the product of those two, so minus 9 times 10 minus lambda. All right, so now I need to FOIL this out, subtract, multiply this through, and then add the 70, or sorry, add the 54, multiply all this through and clean it up. Uh, rather than go through and do all that stuff, I'm just going to tell you what we get. Uh, after we go through and do everything, we end up with this function. So this is our characteristic polynomial. And if I want to find the eigenvalues of this, I'm going to set this equal to zero and figure out what we get. But here we just said determine the characteristic polynomial. Oops. So if that's all we're asked, then that is the answer right there. Now suppose we were asked to find the eigenvalue. Trying to figure out um, the roots of this is not easy. So I highly recommend that you just go into Desmos or some other thing and just try to find the zeros of this. Because recall, the eigenvalues are going to be the lambda where this thing is zero. So if you go into Desmos or some other application and just graph this, you can immediately see we've got minus 2, 2, and 4. So uh, I can just look at this and say I've got minus 2, 2, and 4. Uh, now, suppose that the other some of these roots are not so nice, and one of them is nice, and you want to get this exact. There's another thing you could do is let's just look at this and say, okay, there's a lambda minus two. So, I'm sorry, there's a lambda equals minus two as a root, so I can factor out a lambda minus a minus two from here. Then, once I get a quadratic, then I can go through and use the quadratic equation. So let's go through and take a look at that. So I'm, I'm just going to use the minus 2 here because I know that and focus on that thing. So I know that that's my characteristic polynomial. I know that minus 2 is a root. So that means I can factor out lambda plus 2. So how would I do that? I say I take my lambda plus 2. And I'm just going to divide that out. So that if you're used to using synthetic division, you want to do it that way, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to do it the long way because I can't remember the synthetic division. So let's see. Uh, Lambda goes into minus lambda cubed minus lambda squared times. So lambda times minus lambda squared equals that. So let's multiply that times this whole thing. So lamb minus lambda squared times lambda gives me minus lambda cubed plus 2 times a minus lambda squared. 
So this minus this is 0. 4 lambda squared minus a minus 2 lambda squared is 6 lambda squared. And we bring the rest down. Let's see, 6 lambda squared divided by lambda is 6 lambda. So if I go lambda times 6 lambda, I get 6 lambda squared. 6 lambda plus 2, or sorry, 6 lambda times 2 is 12 lambda. So 6 lambda squared minus 6 lambda squared is 0. 4 lambda minus 12 lambda. So this is going to be minus 8 lambda. And then I'm going to bring this down. And then minus 8 lambda divided by lambda is minus 8. So let's see, minus 8 times lambda is minus 8 lambda. Minus 8 times 2 is minus 16. And if I subtract those, I get 0. If you do not get a 0 here, that means you have a remainder. And that means either you made an algebra mistake here, or you made a bad choice there. So what does that say? That tells me now that my f of lambda is going to be lambda plus 2 times this beast. And now I can just use quadratic equation on this, or I can factor it. Right, this is a nice case, so I know I can factor it. So this is going to be, let me pull out a minus sign. So f lambda is minus lambda plus 2. This is going to be what? Lambda. Um, minus 4 and lambda minus 2. Okay, so there's my characteristic equation. It's now factored and I can immediately just look at this and say lambda is going to be minus 2 if that's 0, lambda is going to be 4 if that's 0, or lambda is going to be positive 2 if I make that 0. Okay, again this is the characteristic polynomial. These are the roots of the characteristic polynomial. And the roots of the characteristic polynomial are the eigenvalues of the matrix.